Good afternoon, my fellow scientists. It is Friday, January 19th, 2018, and I want to talk to you about the iron battery. For those of you who are new here, for the last year and change, I have been constructing an all iron battery, a cell whose design allows it to use an iron anode and an iron salt cathode to store energy. And the hope is this will be so eco-friendly and cheap and DIY accessible that anybody could build a battery for demonstration or for storage of actual useful solar or wind energy. To do that, we're going to need to optimize the chemistry a bit, and the current design has worked for a week before failing, and it can definitely stand some improvement, but is slowly gaining on the dollar per watt hour metric. Uh, that, that is really so key to make this kind of energy storage situation work. So how does the battery actually function? Well, here is a schematic of how the chemistry is laid out. You have an iron anode, and then on the flip side, you have a carbon felt current collector, which is saturated with some iron salt. I've also tried iron EDTA. I suspect at these pHs, I am precipitating iron hydroxide and or iron sulfate from the supporting electrolyte. But today I want to take a few minutes and talk about how we actually assembled this cell in my lab so that I can refer to this in the future for folks who might want to try this themselves using this particular design. Uh, the chemistry is definitely going to change. We're going to try to optimize the pH, the supporting electrolyte, the chemistry of the iron salt, and the separator chemistry. But I'm going to use this same basic construction method for the next foreseeable six months or so. Uh, as we refine the chemistry. We're going to start with some Wattman 1CHR chromatography paper, and I'm going to use just a pair of scissors to cut that to fit into this little pill pouch bag. Once that's cut, I fold it into a little envelope just the size of the bag and prepare some 2-propanol and nafion solution for pipetting. I pipette that onto the little paper envelope and then let it soak through, stand the paper envelope up, and allow it to dry for an hour or more. The alcohol evaporates and it leaves behind the nafion in the paper. And if you put a little bit of blue dyed water onto it, you can see it beads up, unlike the untreated paper where it actually just soaks into the paper. Here's a further example where I pipette it. You can see it's a little ball, put it on untreated paper, and it just soaks right in. Now I'm going to take that little nafion treated paper envelope, open it up, and add some steel wool and iron wire. That's going to be the anode. The steel wool contributes more volume of iron, or more mass of iron, and the iron wire acts as a current collector on that without changing the chemistry at all. Just fold that up inside the little envelope, and it's ready to go. I'm going to insert that little paper envelope into the plastic pill pouch bag. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but with a little work, I can get it in there. With the anode and the membrane in the bag, I'm going to fold up a little strip of paper to act as an additional spacer, put that in the bag next to the envelope. Now I'm going to make a plastic insulator to go between the anode and the cathode. I just marked it out using a ruler and then cut it and put it in the bag. Now we're going to make the cathode current collector by cutting a piece of carbon felt, wrapping it in chromel wire, and then inserting that down into the bag next to that spacer. You can better see the purpose of the spacer looking from the side. It just keeps the two wires from touching one another. It doesn't interfere with the space in front of the membrane. So there you have it. You can assemble an entire cell from a little pill pouch and some basic materials. The nafion could be replaced with any number of other polymers, including something like agar or agarose, which I will attempt in the near future for comparison's sake. In the meantime, if you like that kind of thing, tune in to the Allen Lab. Every week we update on the iron battery, construction and performance, and we want to give a special thanks to those supporters who helped us to fund an undergraduate who's going to be working on this in the next month and helping me to refine this battery and get together a very detailed instruction set for how to build these yourself. Thank you all, and we will see you next week.